Hey guys, we have a new battery from Vatrer to take a look at here today. This is their 51.2 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate rack mount battery. They've been asking me to review one of these for a little while now, and I finally said, sure, why not? This battery looks a little different than some of the other rack mount batteries we have reviewed on this channel. I like to see that. That means it's not just a copy or a clone of another product. At $1,023 shipped, this is one of the cheapest batteries on the market right now in the 51.2 volt, 100 amp hour grouping. They sacrificed some BMS functionality to help bring that price down a little bit, uh, but I think you will agree it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, so let's take a closer look. The specifications are fairly standard. It's a 102 pound battery designed to fit in a 19 inch standard server rack. Uh, it takes up four rack units of space. It's rated for 100 amps continuous charge and discharge current, though it is recommended to limit the charge to 20 amps or a 0.2 C rate. It has low temperature charge protection and it also has Bluetooth support. It is rated for 5,000 or more cycles, but of course it does not define what a cycle is in the specifications. Taking a look at the front of the battery, we have a pair of collapsible handles on both sides. We have a circuit breaker. It is a Delixi, Delixi? Uh, 125 amp. It does have an AC rating stamped on the front. We have a display for our BMS and then we have our positive and negative terminals. These look like some pretty hefty terminals. You can fit two lugs on each screw and there are two screws per terminal. The bolts have a good bit of mass to them as well. They are M8 bolts and I know it doesn't have much to do with functionality of the battery but I really like the design they have printed on these batteries now. Uh, their wall mount version is pretty much the same design and it just gives a nice sleek techie feel. This battery came with four rack gears. I don't really know why. It had two rack gears installed and then there were two more rack gears in the box. So I don't know if that was a mistake. We've got your typical user's manual. And then we got a set of silicone insulated cables. Let's go ahead and pull the cover off here. Plastic here. You can see the cells are all bolted together. They've got some nice bus bars. They do have humps in the middle to allow for expansion. Uh, those are aluminum bus bars. These are the balance leads. You can see them all nicely routed here in spiral wrap. They are held down by the spacers between the cells. Each balance lead is terminated with a ring terminal heat shrink. It is screwed down to the bus bar at a location that is different from the battery terminals, which is great to see. So there are 16 cells here. This is the main positive and they sort of zigzag around the case here with how they are connected. All the way back to the lower right here where we have the main negative and where all the balance leads come back through. Uh, I can see our BMS down in there. It does look like a JBD BMS. It's not the typical paste that we've seen on rack mount batteries, um, but I see we have one temperature sensor on the battery here in the front. I do like seeing good structural support in these cases, and these are some heavy duty uh, support braces they have going across here. So the inside BMS area is very simple. As I've said, it's not a paste BMS. There's not a whole lot to it. We can see our negative terminal comes off the battery. It's a pair of number eight gauges that goes into the B minus terminal. And then we have the conductor coming out of the C minus terminal over to the main uh, negative lug. The positive is a number six coming off the battery. It goes down into the circuit breaker. Then from the circuit breaker, it goes over to the main positive terminal. Uh, and these connections do appear to be good on the circuit breaker. Uh, I did pull them and nothing moved on either side. I gave them both a good tug. I do see torque marks on pretty much all of the bolts, which I do like to see. That means somebody has checked them all. They're on the BMS as well. Uh, and there are torque markings on all of the battery bolts. For some reason, some of these manufacturers love to use large, large globs of the silicone adhesive stuff. I don't really know why. I don't see any condition under which these connectors are going to back out. Now, I know these batteries aren't designed really to be user serviceable, but still, what could be the point of putting this gigantic glob of adhesive on this connector? I don't understand. Additionally, we have a second temperature sensor outside of the battery here. It's just affixed to the front of the case. All right, so it looks like I cannot remove a single cell from this battery without sliding out this entire pack. And we're gonna do that because I really like to see what cell is being used in here. However, I did run into one minor problem in trying to get some of these bus bars off. When I tried to loosen the nut on the positive post here for the main positive terminal, the nut and this whole stud is rotating. Now, it has not broken the laser weld down here. These studs are laser welded into place. You can see that here. 
I'm not really sure how to get that out. I can sit here and twist it all day and I guess the stud is rotating under the part that was laser welded. Now I had no problem getting some of these other nuts off. You can see I've taken about a half dozen or so off already. Um, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this now. That's, that's a bit unfortunate. These are EVE cells. They are EVE, I think they're LF100LA. So here is the QR code. You can see it starts with 04Q, which is typical of an EVE cell. It appears to be the original QR code. I don't see any sanding or polishing or anything that looks suspicious. And it says here 320 watt hours. So these are 100 amp hour cells. And there's a sticker on here with a test date. So I see December 8th of 2023. Uh, that's about four months ago now. And it tested at 104.23 amp hours. These are very, very nice cells. And it's unfortunate that I've damaged this one, but this piece here that goes around is the piece that is laser welded to the battery terminal. This stud is a separate piece of material and I think this part was likely spot welded or in some way attached to this round piece underneath of the part where it was laser welded and that's the connection point that broke. It's not necessarily a flaw in this cell or this terminal style. It's just that these nuts are on so tight or they're glued that when I tried to back them off, it, it broke this, whatever weld or press fitting was in place here. I have not done a capacity test on this battery. I always do capacity tests before I tear them apart in case I break something like this. And this one time I decided to do the tear down first and then go back and do the capacity test, of course something broke. The other thing I wanted to talk about before I go to are these plastic holders they have. So these are actually very nice plastic holders. They fit nicely over the cell. There's a tab here, there's a tab here. These clip together and hold the battery together. Uh, this does hold the cells approximately 1 8 inch apart. All right, so I did manage to get the stuck nut off. After quite a while of trial and error and being unsuccessful, I ended up just taking a rotary tool and I sliced down the side of the nut so I can knock it off. And taking a look at one of the leftover pieces here, you can see the lower right is where the plastic or the nylon bushing is, the part of the lock nut. But on the left hand side here, you can see quite a bit of residue left over, crusty residue. Now I did ask the company, do you use any thread lock or glue adhesive or anything on these nuts? And they said, no. So here is the bottom of the flange nut that was used on the negative pole. It came off successfully without problem, but you can see this hard, crusty blue stuff. That's pretty sure that's thread locker. I'm no expert, but that looks like thread locker to me. Uh, it was not present on any of the bus bars or any of the nuts that linked the cells together. It was only the positive and negative. And uh, that's not a bad thing at all. It's a good thing. I like to see thread locker. Uh, it just made my job a little bit difficult trying to take this apart. Fortunately, while I did have to cut that nut off and I did damage a number of the threads in the process, there were still enough threads left that I was able to put a new nut on, uh, as you can see right here. And uh, that allowed me to run the capacity test. Now I am still going to replace the cell because my philosophy is always when in doubt, throw it out, right? The cell's damaged. Uh, well, the cell's not damaged, the, the terminal's damaged. So I ran it through the usual process. I charged it up with my Ames 48 volt charger until the BMS shut it off. I left it sit for several hours to do some balancing, but I think there's still a bit more that can be done to maximize capacity. I then connected it to a 48 volt inverter with a space heater, which pulled approximately 930 watts. This was connected to a battery and BMS and shunt, the usual capacity test setup that I test my batteries with. I let it run until the BMS shut down again later that evening. The resulting capacity was 103 amp hours. That is perfect. Taking a real quick look at the BMS app here. This is a standard JBD BMS. So I use the Overkill Solar app. Uh, we're gonna go to settings here and pull down all of the settings. It will begin balancing at 3.3 volts when there is a 15 millivolt difference and it will balance at rest. So this is perfect settings in my opinion. Over temperature protection kicks in at 65 degrees Celsius. Under temperature protection is at zero degrees Celsius or freezing point. So that's good to see as well. Uh, so the cell is considered over voltage at 3.75 volts. Under volt is at 2.2 volts per cell. Uh, that is a little bit lower than we typically see, but it's still within reason for the specifications of the cells. And then we see the overcurrent settings are 120 amps for five seconds and 130 amps for 10 seconds. Uh, so again, we have three temperature sensors. There is one on the top of the cell. There is one on the inside of the case, and there's going to be one on the FETs inside the BMS. All right, so everything about this battery checks out pretty well other than the terminal damage that was my fault. These are quality cells, EVE model LF100LA. They're brand new. 
I don't see anything suspicious about the QR codes or anything like that. But the cabling is all done pretty well. The balance leads are routed nicely. We don't have a whole lot of functionality in the BMS being that it's not the typical PACE BMS. However, I get comments on my videos over and over again, people saying, why do you use communications and you don't need communications and it's complicated and all of this stuff. So I like to see that we have options available that do not have those features because if you don't need them or don't want them, why pay for them? And this is a perfect example of that. JBD BMSs are good BMSs. You just don't have the communication support. And there's a few other features you don't get as well. You don't get the charge limiting. Um, you don't get the pre-charge circuitry, things like that. But it has all of the basic functionality you want under and over volt protection, under and over temperature protection, low temperature charge protection. Uh, and by the way, I did find one testing declaration for that circuit breaker that did list a DC rating. I think it was up to 60 volts for a single pole. Otherwise, I don't think I have much more to say at this point. I will leave a link to this battery down in the video description along with a coupon code you'll need to use to get that discounted price of $1,023. And that was an all-inclusive price. It included taxes and included free shipping. Uh, and this battery actually shipped via ground shipping. It was not freight. It wasn't a pallet or anything like that. So if any of you guys out there have one of these or decide to buy one, please let us know your experience as well down in the comment section. And if you're looking to buy one, that's always a great place to read through other people's reviews as well. Otherwise, please hit that like button before you go. And thanks for watching.